So I'm going to get started because i got a lot of information and a short time to do it. I promise I'll get you out of here before dinner. Oh, you don't? Oh, oh, you all want out here for lunch. Okay, okay, okay. Um, go to the book of Matthew, if you would, please. Chapter 19, if you have your Bibles. I'm going to read two scriptures. No one puts a piece of unshrunk clothing on an old garment. For the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine in old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, and the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Amen? So, I've heard a lot of sermons on this, but today I just basically want to teach. Because sometimes we learn, uh, when we read the Bible, but you have to look back at who the Bible was written to and what their traditions are. I know that a lot of people don't know what a wineskin is and what a wineskin is used for and why did Jesus tell us about wineskins, why we need to know about wineskin. But I'm one of them biblical nerds. So I like to know everything. I want to know everything about it. So, number one, no one puts a patch on an old garment. I don't know if you all, like, like me, I have like this favorite pair of jeans that, you know, I had like forever, and they had holes in them, and I just didn't want to throw them away because they was really comfortable because I was used to wear. Y'all don't have any clothes like that? Okay, maybe it's a sweatshirt that you should have thrown away like three years ago, but you're just ready to put a patch on it. I, 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 talk, I guess I told you I'm a nerd. Sometimes you got something that fits so comfortably on you, you don't want to get rid of it. Sometimes you got some behaviors that you're so comfortable in, you don't want to get rid of. Oh, come on. Y'all ain't ready for me today. Come on, it's me. You ain't going to sleep. Amen? So, when the new patch shrinks, it tears older, weaker garments. So what happens is when you put a new patch on an old piece of clothing, you know when you throw them clothes in the dryer, they come out shrunk, right? Okay, maybe that's just me. I send my clothes, I put them in the dirty laundry, they come back and they're belly shirts. <laughs> maybe it's just me, I don't know. Um, but when it goes through the dryer, it comes out with less material than when it went in. I don't know how that works, but... Sometimes I don't even get all my socks back, just one pair. I don't know what's going on in my house, but, you know. So sometimes when you put a new patch that hasn't been shrunk in a dryer on an old garment, it tears the old garment when it shrinks because you tie it together with the old material. The old material gets weak. All right? Number two, in that time... They would take grape juice right from the vine and put it into new wineskins. So those of us who don't know what this process is, they would take a wineskin, which usually used pig skin or some kind of skin, and they would make a sack out of it and sew it together. And they would put new fresh wine right off the vine into the sack. And then they would let it sit, and it would ferment. And when it would ferment, it would swell up because it would release gases inside of it. If you let it sit and you use it and that wineskin gets old, what happens is it's no longer pliable. So if you tried to put new wine in that old wineskin, when it began to ferment and to swell, it would bust the old wineskin because it wasn't pliable. That's why when you put new wine in a new wineskin, you're fine because it's pliable. It can expand. Oh, my. I'm going somewhere. Just give me a minute. As it would ferment, it would release gases that would cause the wineskin to stretch. But because the wineskin was new and pliable, it wouldn't tear. 
Now, an old wine skin, when you take it, it would get weak. An old wine skin would be weaker because the, when the gases that were released in the fermentation process, it would weaken the wall of the bag. Oh, my. We're going somewhere, I promise. Now, the old wine skin, after it was used, it would harden up. So then it would become weak. So if you would stretch it, it would rip. It would tear. It wouldn't. It had no pliability. Oh, man. Some of y'all are so hardened in your ways. Not this church, but some of y'all online. Y'all need to soften up a little bit. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have a vivid picture of what the process is that Jesus is actually referring to and talking about, I want to look at the application. So the application in the Bible that he's using here, he's talking to the Jews. And he was talking to the religious folks. Jesus was telling them that the new covenant was not going to be just a patched up version of the old covenant. Mm, come on. These religious folks were trying to desperately hold on to the old covenant and the old law. It just wouldn't work because the two covenants are so contrary to each other. In the old covenant, the old covenant says that you're justified by your works. We all understand that doesn't work. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So none are justified. The new covenant is not a merit based on works. It's not a covenant based on merit or based on works, but based on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So it has nothing to do with me or how good or how bad I am. It only has to do with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen? So the two covenants are so complete opposite that they cannot coexist at the same time. So Jesus is trying to communicate that to these religious folks at this time. So now that we've looked at the application to the Jews in this situation, how does this apply to us? My goodness, I'm so glad you asked. So as the children of God, this applies to us because, let me go back. Christians who are called to, be, to come out of the world, right? But yet we still act like the world. Oh, come on. So, the old wide skin, the new wide skin, let's put it into context for us. God puts new wine, the new covenant, pours new wine into new wine skins. We got saved, right? But yet we're not acting like new wineskins. We're acting like we just took some holy patches and stuck them on our wineskin. It's not a full skin. We just stick patches over here, all over the place, right? We're sticking holy patches and expecting it to hold new wine. Okay, so I can't run around. I can't sleep around. Give me a patch. Okay, so, so, so look, I was really wanting to give somebody a fat lip, but I didn't. I was holy. I, was, I, I, I showed them love. Give me a patch. <laughs> we, we act in Christianity, and, and sometimes we portray this message to the world that it's okay to live your life and continue in your life just like you were in your old life and just put a few of these holy patches on and you're saved and sanctified. But actually, Jesus and Paul said, you must die to yourself. It's about something brand new, not about taking something old and patching it up. Jesus said, the price I paid for you was so great. Mm, I want all of you. Why do we keep giving him patches? Huh? We're all patched up. I don't like patch jobs. I just, I don't like patch jobs. Don't work for me. I don't like it. So we already talked about the principle, the contrary elements that can't mix. So you've got two elements, 
something to a completely opposite one from the other. They just don't mix. It cannot mix. A lot of us Christians try to live new lives as if we're living in the old way and we slap a few holy patches on our lives. We have to be so careful on the message that we're communicating to the world and to people because the gospel was not supposed to be that at all. Pretty much, we teach people that you can continue living your life just like you always did. You just have to change a few things, throw, throw a few holy patches on, don't sleep around, get baptized, you know, these kind of things, and, and you're good. When in reality, Jesus asked us to die to ourselves and come alive to Christ. But see, when you get, begin to pour the new wine into the old wineskin, what happens is you lose the new wine. It spills out. Jesus said, I already spilled my blood once. I ain't doing it again. Once was enough. Once was enough. Once was enough to give you a new wineskin. Once was enough to pour in new wine. Once was enough. But we tend to keep patching things up, but we don't understand why... Jesus, why won't you use me? Jesus, why won't you fill me? Jesus, why won't you come to me? Why don't you speak to me? Why don't you pour wine in me? Why don't you? Oh, Lord, fill me up. Why? It's just going to run out. Oh. Come on. We, we expect God to do all of these great things in our lives, but we're not willing to give up what he asked us to give up. Mm. The difference between the you before you got saved and the you after you got saved should be so drastic that the two can't commingle. Your sanctified self should be so offended by your old man that he... <laughs> oh, my. Come on. We, we, we spent, <laughs> I'm losing y'all. Are you with me? We get so settled in just a patch job, right? Are you settled? Are you willing to settle for just a patch job? That's not what we're called to. So if I had to name my message today, I would call it not just a patch job. Have you just added a few righteous acts to your old ways of living? Or have you thrown away the old wineskin? Somebody needs to throw away the old wineskin. Throw away the old wineskin. Throw away the old ways. Throw away the old way of thinking. Throw away. Come on. Throw it away. Yes, give him some glory. Because if you try to pour new understanding into your old ways of thinking, it can't work. We do. We keep trying to walk in a new way, thinking the same old way. James said a double-minded man need not think he received anything from Christ. Oh. The old wineskin will burst and the wine will be lost. Ezekiel 36, 26. I'm going to share one more scripture with you. Ezekiel prophesied, and this is a prophetic message. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Oh, my. Remember we was talking about a new wineskin? So when the wineskin is already used and old, it becomes hardened. There's some religious folks out there that need to get rid of the old wineskin. Let God give you a new wineskin, a new heart. Um, 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 uh, David said it like this. He says, give me a new heart and a right spirit. Okay, so, so the wineskin 
I believe that, that we're talking about is our heart. God gives us a new heart, right? A new heart after him. Oh, my. So the new heart, the religious folks in those days, they were old wineskins. They were religious, and they were hardened in their traditions. They were so learned and educated in religion that they were no longer pliable. Are you still pliable? Amen? They thought they knew it all. Um, I, I got a little story that I like to tell people. You know, if you're ripe, you're rot. If you're green, you grow. You ever seen a green tomato? I know, you turn your lip up, but eventually, if you let it ripen, it turns red. But once it turns red, the only place it can go from there is rotten. If you think you know all that you are ever going to need to know, you are going to rotten. You think you know all you need to know about Jesus and can nobody tell you nothing because you know everything? You will rotten. Oh, my. Y'all don't want to talk to me no more. These religious folks had gotten so set in their ways, and that's why in this church, I do not want to be religious and I do not want to be set in traditions to such an effect in such a way that the Holy Spirit can't move when he wants to move and do what he wants to do because there's people that are hurting and dying that I have no idea or clue about that the Holy Spirit recognizes and knows and he could do more for you in five seconds than I could ever do in your lifetime. So, so we want to be pliable because we want to let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does. When, when you become hardened, hardened-hearted, I should say, you're set in your ways and you don't want to allow God to do anything because you think you're doing it all. Oh, my. You think that, that everybody's getting what they're getting because you're so good when actually, I don't know if you heard that song that Pastor G was singing Without him, I got nothing. But we seem to think all the time that it's us. See, the fermentation process is a metabolic process in which microorganisms actively create a desirable change in food, beverages, whether it's increasing flavor or pre per, uh Preserving food or providing health benefits. Let me, let, let me say that one time. Fermentation is a metabolic process in which microorganisms actively create a desirable change in food, beverages, all of the above. The fermentation process in us, when Christ puts the new wine in and it has to ferment for a while, that, that listen, when the new wine comes, he begins to change us from the inside out. He begins to do what only he can do, the metabolic process that he can do and change, and then you become more desirable. Oh, my. I'm in the wrong church. So the fermentation process... I believe Jesus was trying to tell us a lot more than what we think. We're just looking at a wineskin. But listen, he said we are the wineskins, and he's the new wine. So when he comes in, he's going to change the molecular structure of who I am. He's going to do something inside of me that I never thought could be done. He's going to give me understanding that I didn't know I could have. And he's going to do something inside of me that's going to make it appealing and favorable to a world that's lost and dying. He's going to do inside of me what I couldn't do to make me appealing and more tasteful to somebody out there who's lost. Because God has put something on the inside of you. He wants to make, and I know I'm driving the cameraman crazy, but give me a second. He wants to do something on the inside of us to make us desirable of the world. It makes food and drink more desirable, right? Jesus said, you must eat my body and drink my blood. 
Ow, come on. You must eat my body and drink my blood. When you partake of Christ and he becomes a part of you, right? So guess what you're feeding other people? Oh, my. It makes you desirable to them because what they're getting is not you. They're getting him. Oh, so that when I open my mouth, it is not Steve who's. Let me talk to this side because this side's going to sleep. So, so when I talk and I speak the gospel, right? And I'm not talking about, I'm speaking the gospel. You're drinking and eating the gospel that's coming forth out of my lips. Ain't got nothing to do with me, right? Because it's the gospel of the kingdom. Oh, my. Y are y'all with me? I told you I was going somewhere. I'm a little slow, but you give me a minute. We get stuck in our old ways. We get hardened hearted. Sitting in church so long, if I don't get to go to this pew and I don't get to park at this spot and I don't get to do this and if, and if you don't give me this job and, and if I can't do what I want to do, well, well, everybody's mad. Oh, my. We got to be pliable. We got to be pliable. So what does pliable mean? That means able to perform and form in any way, shape, or form Christ has called you to. Paul said, I become all things to all people that I might be able to reach some, right? That means I'm going to do what I got to do to reach the lost at any cost for Christ. But, but if we're not pliable, sometimes... Oh, my. Did you see her? Psh. way she dressed, I ain't talking to her. I know you ladies never talk like that. Not in this church. Oh, my goodness. D did you see him? He looks like a drug addict. I hope they come. I hope they come. How can, you, how can they change if they don't get the right food? They're getting wine from the world that's already fermented by their behaviors. Why don't they come and get the new wine so that they can get fermented on the inside by Christ? Our fermentation process in the world is already sewed up. They already got it. They already know how to do it. They got NBC, NBC and, and Fox. They got uh, commercials. They got movies. They got their perversion on every channel you turn on. They don't need our help. Come on, we're fighting. We're fighting a battle. We're going to sleep. Time to wake up. When God puts his new wine in us, if you have the old wineskin mentality, mm, or if you're stuck in your old ways, or if you're hard-hearted, you can't retain the new wine. We can't retain the new wine. Amen? When God begins to pour his new wine into our wineskins or our new hearts, the fermentation process will not burst the new wineskin. Or should I say... Your heart. He pours new understanding into our hearts, and when it ferments, it begins to stretch. The fermentation process begins to stretch the wineskin, right? How, how many feel like God is stretching you? You're in a state, and in in you're in a process in your life, and you feel like you're being stretched. Oh, my. God ain't stretching your faith. God's not stretching you. Believe him for something that you... Never believed in for before? I know there's a lot of us in here that God is stretching us. God is stretching us. The fermentation process is called a stretching process where God begins to stretch your heart to do things that you didn't want to do, cause you to be like you didn't want to be. Come on, stretching you. Man, y'all might be walking a different walk than me. Y'all walking a different process. He pours new understanding into our hearts because the fermentation process is designed to stretch us.
to make us more desirable to those who are looking for new wine. Mm. This process will cause you to be stretched, but will cause your faith to be stretched. It will cause your wallet to be stretched. It will cause... We'll skip over that. Don't it feel like God is stretching you? Stretching you to believe for the impossible again? I don't know about you, but it's been a long time since I've been able to free my mind to believe for the impossible things of God. The miracle signs and wonders again. Maybe he's stretching you financially to trust him. Maybe he's stretching you to show love when you want to share a fat lip. Maybe, he's, <laughs> maybe God is stretching you to pour your wine into some new wineskins. The wine that he's given you. What did you do with what I gave you, son? The wine that I poured into you, did you pour it into somebody else? What did you do with the wine I gave you? Did you sit at home and drink by yourself? Mm. This building's beautiful, ain't it? What's it for? For us to sit in here and be comfortable? For us to sit in here and ferment? It's a funny thing about fermentation. Fermentation, when you keep it bottled up, it does no good. But when you open it up and expose it to the air. Come on, when you open it up and expose it to the air, how are you going to know what it tastes like if you keep that bottle bottled up? But when you pop the top, uh-oh. Come on, y'all act like you don't know. I know you're popping the top. Come on. So, so if you keep it all bottled up, it doesn't do any good. You'll have no idea how tasteful it is. You'll have no idea how desirable it is until you take the top off and expose it to the air. Expose it to the places that need it the most. Expose it to the places that need the new wine. So then you take your wine that Christ put inside of you, and you begin to pour it into new wine skins. There's so many new wineskins out there that are desperate. They're tired. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. And here we sit all comfortable and cozy. Yeah, you're blessed. Yeah, I'm blessed, all right. To our shame. To our shame. When was the last time you took that wine and poured it out? When was the last time you let the fermentation of God take you to a place where you was able to s sacrifice something? Oh, man, sacrifice. <sighs> Ouch. Oh, you mean I got to give something up? I got to change something? But I like things the way they was. I like the old law. Then I can point everybody's flaws out, and I don't have to look at myself. Isn't it funny how we always revert back to the old law? Because the first time that you feel the conviction come upon yourself, you but, but I ain't as bad as so-and-so. We want to revert back to the old law. She giggling like she's guilty. We always want to revert back to the old law. We want to point out everybody else's flaws because then we no longer are picking on ourselves, right? Take the focus off of my flaws and let's look at yours. But there's a problem with that because that means that you're a patch short. You got a leak somewhere. You are patched short. You need one more patch. Why not just do it all one time, get a whole new wineskin, amen? Come on. Give him some glory. Or have we become content with just a patch job? 
Have we gotten to the place in our walk with Christ? Listen, I feel convicted myself. So many times I think, well, okay, I got this in order. I got that in order. I don't do this anymore. Don't do that anymore. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. I'm there. I'm there. I'm here. Why do I revert back to the old law? Never was about me. Never going to be about me, but I make it about me. Maybe I'm all by myself out here, and that's okay, because y'all can look at me, because I'm, I'm, I'm throwing out, I'm being transparent for myself. Sometimes we look at, I got this in order, I got that in order. Okay, God's going to bless me. Like, God can't bless you unless you get everything in order. Let me tell you a little secret. God blessed me when I was laying in the gutter. God don't have to wait for you to fix your problems. God says, come to me just like you are so I can fix your problems. We keep making it about our behavior. God said, it's not about your behavior. It's about my righteousness. My righteousness. It's about the righteousness of Christ. So what we tend to do is take our old wineskin, patch it up with a couple holy patches, and then we expect God to put his holy righteousness in our patch job. I know y'all don't do it. It's just me. Too many times we put expectations on God to follow the law. The law... But we don't live by the law anymore, right? Oh, Jesus was perfection of the law, right? Hmm. Doesn't mean the law doesn't exist. It just means that his righteousness has already paid the price for the penalty of my sins because all of us are guilty. There would be no righteousness without him. Too often we make it about us. So then we sit back and say, okay, I don't sleep around anymore. I don't do this anymore. I go to church every time the doors are open. I'm righteous. I'm holy. Running around the same old wineskin that you was born in. Gossiping about your brothers and sisters with a forked tongue. Oh, my. I know, I know, nobody likes to hear it, but that's okay. I, you, 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 you could take it out on me, it's my fault. Listen, we run around in that old wineskin, that old behavior, that old mindset, that old way of living, that old way of thinking, and we forget. If you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, how come you still look like you did? How come you can't tell the difference between the old you and the new you? I, I have a problem with this because I, I don't like the old me. I don't like the old me. But sometimes God will reveal some of the old me in me. I know y'all don't deal with that. God will reveal some of the old me in me that I didn't even know was still there. So I'm like, man, Lord, I thought I got a new wine skin. I thought I was made brand new. He said, son, I gave you a new wineskin, but you're still contaminated with some flesh. Your flesh is not going to get saved. But if your new wineskin can't recognize your old wineskin behaviors, who is that? Oh, get under my feet, Satan. Come on, if we can't recognize what the, because, because the new me doesn't look much different than the old me, so I can't recognize when the old man is manifested or if I'm living in my new man or because I look the same. Your new wineskin should look so different than your old wineskin that your new wineskin says, I don't know who that is or what that is, but that is not who I am anymore. Get behind me, Satan, because I, now I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. And who do you think you are coming at this child of the Most High God? Oh, get behind me. 
But when you can't tell the difference between the old you and the new you, you got issues. Because then you think you're righteous in your own works. You're no longer looking at Christ for his righteousness, but you're looking at yourself for your own righteousness and holiness. Oh, my goodness. I can't. They won't come back. How many times have we tried to make ourselves righteous in what we do and because of who I think I am and yet walked away from the righteousness that was given to us? We need to go back and read our Bibles again. Jesus was crucified for us. Why do we crucify him afresh every day? How many times do we have to go back? Read it again. You read it until the old you doesn't look like the new you. Amen? I told you I'd get you out of here early today. I don't know who this message was for today. I'm closing, whoever's doing the, I don't know who this message is for today, but I hope that somebody heard it. Turn it down a little bit, turn it down just a little bit. I hope that somebody heard it. I hope that somebody heard it. Come on, guys. Maybe it's for you online. Maybe, maybe you've been living in a state where you thought that you were right, but you're wrong. Maybe God has something fresh and new for you. Maybe he's got a new wineskin for you. Maybe he's got some new wine to pour into you. But we've been so hard-headed And stuck in our old ways that we've missed the opportunity to receive from the new wine. Amen? I hope that you're not content with just a few patches when you can have a brand new wineskin. I hope that we have not forgotten the price that was paid for us. Because when we do, we do it again. All over again. Would you stand with me today? If you're online watching today and you don't know my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, I invite you today to accept Him into your heart. That you would Ask Him to forgive you, to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. For all of us here today, I encourage you to check your wineskin. Check your patches. Make sure you're not leaking that new wine that came at so high a price. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you so much. We thank you for everything that you died and gave to us. We thank you for the price that you paid for our souls. And we thank you that we can be made new, that we can die to ourselves and come alive to you. Father, I ask you to do a new thing within us. Change our hearts. Give us a new heart and a right spirit, O God. Do inside of us what only you can do. And Father, we'll always give you the praise, glory, and honor for it. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray for each and every one here today. I pray, Lord, that your favor would go before them and make, make a way for them where there is no way. That you would do what only you can do. If you came here today needing healing, I pray you leave healed. If you came here with depression, I pray you leave free. If you came here with an addiction, I pray you relieve free. There is no bondage that can stand in the presence of Almighty God. We rebuke it and we cancel it. In Jesus' name. Amen.